All right, welcome back as we continue with the alien invasion game that we're putting together through the Python Crash Course, second edition by Eric Mathis. Last time we left off, we had created a single alien. Now, we're gonna need to create multiple aliens that fill the screen. And so we're gonna have to do a little bit of calculation here to, to be able to get these aliens to fill up the screen. And we also have to take into account that you could change the size of the screen through various methods um, if you wanted to. And so our code should work if the size of the screen were to change as well. So we're gonna code this using some variables and taking measurements from the actual objects themselves and so if those objects change size, then our code will still work as well. So last time we were working on, let's see, where are we here? We're in the alien invasion and we're trying to find our create fleet. So the create fleet currently creates a single alien, but we wanna create a fleet of aliens. So, uh, we're going to do a little bit of changes here. So let's just make a couple comments to understand what's doing here. We're going to create an alien and find the number of aliens that will fit in a row. And so to do that, we need to set the spacing between each alien as equal. And right now the current spacing is equal amount one aliens width. So the way we're going to do this, uh, we're going to create an alien to begin with um, as an alien that will allow us to generate a few statistics based on the actual alien. So now that we have an alien, we can find this alien's width. So alien width is going to equal the alien dot rectangle dot width. So now when we create the alien, the rectangle that the alien is inside of will have a width. And we're going to tie that to our alien width. And then we're going, once we get that, we're going to calculate the available space, available space X. So available space X. So we're talking about the X space that's available. We'll equal the self dot settings dot screen width. minus two times our alien width. Okay, so why two times the alien width? Well, because we want to be able to have some cushion on either side of the aliens to be able to allow the aliens to move over to the right. So, we'll create a little bit of cushion. That's two alien widths. So that's gonna provide us with some margin, if you will, on either side of our row, allowing our row to have space to move into so that in the beginning it's moving and then it'll come down. So now that we've calculated our available space by finding the screen's width and subtracting two alien widths from it, we're now going to calculate the number of aliens that we can have and we're using the x variable here because we're also going to be creating rows up and down. So uh, these are how many we have available going across. So available space x and we're going to divide by two times 
the alien width just like we did before. Now, this is a little new, probably. We haven't talked about this, but we did discuss that in Python, if you try to attempt division with integers, it will convert it to a float. And that that was a little bit different than um, JavaScript and Java and many other languages, which if you divide with integers, you get integers. And what's happening here is this is called floor division. In Python, they call it floor division. And floor division divides and forgets about the remainder. Any remainder that's left over gets dropped. So our available space divided by two alien widths would tell us how many spaces are available. That's one alien plus a margin of an alien width. So for each spacing, we need to have two alien widths, right? For an alien and the space between the next alien. And so we divide by two alien widths. It tells us how many full, complete slots we have, how many numbers of aliens we can create. And we're going to store that in a variable because we're going to use that number to create a row. And so now that we've calculated how many numbers of aliens we can get on a row, we are going to create the first row. So we'll put a little note in here, create the first row of aliens. And to do that, we're going to do a for loop for alien number in range number of aliens x. So to just kind of recap what this is doing, remember the range function gives us a series of numbers, a list of numbers between zero and the number that, that we put in as an argument. So we calculate how many numbers of aliens we can make. We create a range and alien number is going to be, for every time this loop runs, alien number becomes a different number. First, it, it will be zero, then it will be one, then it will be two. And that's what range does. It starts off and produces numbers. Those numbers will become alien number. And that code is going to help us create our next set of information. So make sure you're indenting that self.aliens.add. And what we're going to do here uh, is we're going to create an alien and place it in the row. So create an alien and place it in the row. So we're just really going to copy this line right here a second time. And the reason we have to put this back in here is because this first one up here creates an alien for the sole purpose of knowing how wide it is. We have to kind of recreate that inside of this for loop because we need that code to run multiple times. So we got to put it back in here. And this is basically just going to override the previous. And we're going to be able to create an alien every time this runs. And after we create the alien here, we are going to code the alien.x. So where are we going to position this alien? That's what we have to figure out. Alien x will equal the alien dot or underscore width plus two times the alien width. And then that's going to be times the alien number. So we're going to start off positioning the alien at its the right hand side and then we're going to add two times the alien width which is how wide of a space we need to position the next one 
As we start off at zero, the first one will be positioned at alien width. When we get up to one, it'll be two times one, two times the alien width times one. So it'll be positioned over two spaces like we wanted, and that's where our next set's gonna be of alien and space. And then the, the range will increase by one again, and we'll go through that, and this for loop will run as many times as this range tells it to do, creating aliens, determining their X value based on this calculation, and this alien number will change as the for loop runs, which means each time it runs and positions the alien, it's gonna be a little farther over to the, to the right. Well, again, once we've determined its X value, we now need to determine its rectangle dot X value. And that's gonna be set to its alien dot X. So now that we have that all set, then we have our self aliens dot add the alien. So first we create the alien, we determine where its X position should be based on the number of aliens that are available and how it should be positioned to move each one across. We assign that value to the rectangle, and then we assign that alien into our group of aliens. And that should produce a row of aliens. So let's check this out. Let's save it, and let's run. And here we have a group of aliens positioned on our screen, nicely laid out, ready to be fired at. And we can see here that even though I fire, it's going right through the alien. So we're gonna to have to fix that. And our aliens are just kind of sitting there, not doing much. So we're gonna to have to make them move. And that's what we're gonna do here is, but before we do that, we need to do a little bit of refactoring because we are gonna be adding multiple rows we're gonna kind of clean this up just a little bit. We have this create fleet, which seems to be getting kind of long. Uh, and so we're just gonna clean this up just a little bit. And we're gonna do that by creating a new method, a new helper method. And we're gonna define this. I'm just putting it right below the create fleet. We're gonna define this as uh, create alien. And so this helper method will help us Okay, so in order to create the alien we need to know self and we need to know an alien number And all we're gonna do here is We're gonna take this set of code here and we're just gonna pull it right down here into this method. And we gotta make sure that we have this indentation correct. So, our create alien takes an alien number and then alien will be created. We'll set its X based on this alien number that we're getting and then the alien rectangle, and then we add that to our aliens.add. So all we're gonna do then is this for loop is just gonna be right in here. Let's make sure this is correct. So for loop, tab over, and we're just going to self dot underscore create alien, and then we're gonna put alien number in here. So uh, alien number gets created in the for loop. And then each time all it's going to do is call that create alien method. And that keeps this creating fleet nice and clean. All right. Uh, and let's do one more set of cleaning up here, we're gonna need to uh, 
come down here and we're going to have to create alien width and set it to alien underscore width is going to be equal to the alien dot rectangle dot width. And there we go. Uh, because the alien width was defined up here in this method, the create fleet, we had this line which defined alien width. However, we brought alien width down here. This alien is in a completely different method now. If it's in a different method, then alien width is not going to be defined in this method. So we just have to copy that second line of code as well. So now we have both of these happening in this create alien. So we get to clean up our method a little bit, but we have a little bit of redundancy and that's okay. So at this point, we just need to be able to add additional rows. So in order to do that, let's go up here to our create fleet. Here in our create fleet, we create our alien self and we have our alien width, but we're also gonna go ahead and, and give ourselves a second variable, alien underscore height. And instead of it being the rectangle width, we're gonna make it the rectangle size. Now size gives us two, va two values, width and height. And those two values are going to be given to two separate variables, width and height. So we can take this attribute, which is a tuple. You see here, the tuple has two integer variables. So if I can assign it to two separate variable names and it'll match the first one with the first variable, the second one with the second variable. So we take care of that very nicely, very cleanly. So now that we have that in there, we have the number of creating the space. We're talking about rows. Before we create the first space, let's do in here, we create the first row. We're just gonna come right in here so we're gonna add a little bit of code in here. Before we create the first row, we need to now determine the number of rows. That fit. All right, so we know how many aliens fit in a row, but how many rows will fit on the screen? And so we have to first find the ship height because that's going to be help determine how many uh, aliens will fit in there. So we set that equal to the self dot ship dot rectangle dot height. And then we figure out the available space, but not X available space Y. And we're going to set that equal to a little bit of work here. Self dot settings dot screen height. And then we're going to subtract. And there's a little bit going on here. So we're just going to come down and tab this over. Actually, let's try to keep them online. So minus parentheses and we'll do three times alien height. So three times alien height, that's inside the parentheses, minus the ship height. Okay, so what's happening here? We're able to fit that all in one line and that's all good, that's preferable. So available space Y, our screen height minus three times the alien height. So assuming we want some space between the ship and the, 
and the last row of aliens, we're going to say three times alien height minus the ship height because there's got to be a, a row for the ship to be moving side to side. So once we take out three alien heights and the ship height, that tells us how many aliens will fit on the screen. And once we determine how much space we have, we can determine the number of rows. So number rows, we'll take the available space, Y, and we'll divide that by two times the alien height. Again, that's the spacing in between our aliens. Make sure that they're not all crammed together. So uh, instead of creating the first row of aliens, now we're going to create the first fleet of aliens. And we're going to have a row of rows, right? We're going to have a two by two chart a table, if you will. There'll be aliens going across and there'll be aliens going up and down. So we're actually going to make what's called a nested for loop. A nested for loop has an inner loop and an outer loop. The outer loop controls up and down. The inner loop controls how many are, are given across a given row. So the outer loop begins the inner loop runs multiple times, producing aliens across the screen. Once that for loop finishes, then the, the outer loop will iterate to the next run, allowing the inner loop to run a second time, producing a second row of aliens. So now we're just going to start by doing a four row number. In range based on number of rows and we're just gonna highlight both of these and tab those over so now that they are nested inside so we're gonna crawl we're gonna call self dot create alien alien number but we also need to give it a second parameter now and we're gonna call this row number so now we know alien number, we know row number, but that also means we need to change our create alien. So we also need to send it a row number. And we're going to come in here, alien width, comma, alien height, just like we did before. So alien width and alien height will become alien size. And then after we get alien rectangle X to be alien X, we also have to do the alien dot rectangle dot Y to equal alien dot rectangle dot height plus two times the alien because we have to account for which row it's in. So it's rectangle dot height and then that's going to be multiplied again by our row number. And once it does that calculation, it's going to know where to position the Y. So I know that's a lot in there. So take your time, make sure uh, that you have this for loop set up correctly. And that's inside of the create fleet. All right, so we did a little bit of changing here. We did a little bit of changing here. A little bit of change. We actually added all of this. And then we did a little bit of changing here. 
and a little bit of changing here. So, a lot going on in there, in these two. But we'll control save, and we'll run this. And you can see uh, we have an error here with our alien number. And so we need to figure out what we did there. Oh yes, I see. Uh, I When I did my row, I accidentally cut off my R here. So um, that's what happened there. It should be alien number here. And since I, I got rid of that declaration, it didn't know what this alien number was. Okay, but we're all good now. Let's try running it one more time. And there we go. There's our game screen filled up with aliens, ready to be shot at. And uh, we are just about ready to make them move. So we'll catch that up in the next video. See you then.